Hey there, my name is Lexi and thank you so much for tuning in to Lex Chat today. If you are new here, welcome. If you are returning, welcome back. This is Lex Chat, a show that is dedicated to music and entertainment where we talk about the industry and the business and we help each other to become better creatives and better artists. Today I want to get into the topic of the top things I avoid as a female engineer and I want to give you some tips on how to be successful if you yourself are also a female engineer. Now these things really apply to both men and women but especially as a female engineer these are just some things that over the years of experiencing working in this field I have found that there are some best and better practices than others. So if that sounds like something you'd be interested in hearing more about, then definitely stay tuned. I'm needing that coming home, stumbling at 2 a.m. Copper that flaws in my knees on them. If you've been sleeping, boy, I don't give a give a give. Cause I'ma get you up tonight. I'm talking that on the phone, playing like a few announcements before we get into that. I want y'all to check out my latest release. It is an album with fellow artist L. Cardi, and the album is called Relations and Sinking Ships. It's a mixture of hip hop and R&B, and we are currently in the process of shooting all the visuals for it. I'm very excited, but yeah, what is my favorite song off of that album right now? It would have to be Oops My Bad at the moment, or maybe Nice and Slow because we just did a music video for it, but it really is a great album and it, the energy around it, the whole process, it was great creating and I'm really excited. So check that out for me. Let me know what you think about it. I would be forever grateful if you would show your support on that. Also, I would like to invite you to join the virtual coffee dates that I host once a month on my Instagram at LexiATL, the first Sunday of the month, okay? So whatever the first Sunday of the month is, that's when we have these virtual coffee dates and it is a virtual meetup of other creatives and we think tank, we brainstorm, we offer support, we point each other into the different directions, different resources, or we become a resource for one another. We'd love for you to join that community. If you are looking for your creative community, come and join us at the virtual coffee date, all right? And if you are in the Atlanta area, then stay tuned into my social media for opportunities for in-person coffee dates to have that physical time, that physical meetup between creatives, all righty? Now, without further ado, let's go ahead and get into the topic of today. Top things I avoid as a female engineer. Something I avoid as a female engineer is answering the phone at all hours of the day. Now, this is something I used to do, especially when I first became an audio engineer. And my mentality behind it was that I don't want to miss any business. I want to make sure that I am available and, you know, communicating with people who might be wanting to get into a session. And I was very much more so in a hustle type of mindset. And there's nothing wrong with that if that is the type of relationship you choose to have with your clients. But as I've gotten older, as I've gotten more experience in this field, and as I've gone through certain relationships, I've leaned more towards and I've created the boundary of not answering my phone at all hours of the day, especially all hours of the night. Music is one of those industries where everyone functions as a night owl for majority of you know the practices that we do. Majority of studio sessions happen at night and audio engineering itself is a job that is a service industry that caters to working around people's schedules. Most people have regular jobs, regular nine to fives. Well, being an audio engineer, we function from five to nine, five at night till nine in the morning. So that's just, that comes with the territory of being in the business. However, how I set up certain boundaries, and this is where the tip comes in, setting boundaries as a female engineer especially is so important. The reason why I no longer accept calls all hours of the night and I no longer accept sessions any hour of the night is because I want my clients to respect my time as much as I respect theirs. So being available 24 seven is actually not healthy. Um, and this also falls in line with the way that social media has us conditioned these days where we think that everything should be accessible 24 seven and that's just not sustainable. And in a previous video that I did where I was talking about why I stopped releasing music, I mentioned that, I was not doing a great job at putting myself first and having self-care days. And I was very much putting everyone else before myself. 
and I had no boundaries around my time and it caused me to be more undervalued by people. The more that people thought I was more available, the more that they felt they could talk to me any kind of way or just dangle a few extra dollars in my face to get me to come out to the studio or to get me to accept a certain, a certain work hour, you know what I mean? And when you limit that interaction, when you set boundaries of, hey, I will answer my phone between this time and this time. If you don't book your session between this time, you got to hit me up the next day. Or if you don't give me this much notice in advance, then you got to book it for such and such day. If you don't have your money ready, you can't book today. It's not confirmed. Like setting those kinds of boundaries, especially as a woman, is very important. And I especially had this lesson, like kind of grilled into my head as I started dating people that I wanted to be serious with and I found that people guys were just not comfortable with me being in sessions at late times with guys that they did not know and it is a very male dominated industry so I understand the apprehension there even though you met me as an audio engineer. No. <laughs> the right one has never given me issues about that however it has been a thing where I don't want my partner to feel uncomfortable with the late hours that I work and I don't want it to be so so much of like a repeat instance that they just expect me to not be around and it like I don't want them to expect to be able to do that late hours of the day with other people. I don't know how to explain it exactly, but it just it's a certain level of respect for myself that I have and a certain level of respect that I want to have for my partner where it's not unreasonable to be like, hey, I don't want you taking sessions past midnight. That's a fairly that's a fairly decent request. Now, sessions can start at 10 o'clock, they can start at 11 o'clock, they can start at 9 o'clock. But once you get into those sessions that are asking you to come in at midnight, 1 a.m., 2 a.m., those people that are coming after the club, that's when we start getting into dangerous territory and that's when we open ourselves up to more BS happening in the studio. So setting those boundaries from the get-go, decide when your hours are going to be. My office hours are from 10 a.m. to about 9 p.m. That's how much time you got to try to get in contact with me to do any kind of business, to set up any kind of date to set up any kind of session, appointment, whatever. Those are my office hours. And on Sundays, you'd be very hard pressed to get me to come in because that is my chosen day of care, my chosen day of rest. So especially as a female engineer, set those boundaries early on and stand on business. This is another one that falls under the boundaries category, but another thing I avoid as a female engineer is working with people I don't like or working with people that I don't feel comfortable being around. And the reason why this is so important, especially as we talk about the boundaries conversation is, I want to be comfortable working at my job. I already explained how, and most people, we already know this, that music is a very male dominated industry. I do not ever want to feel unsafe in a place that is supposed to be a free environment, is supposed to encourage creativity, is supposed to encourage being free and being who you are, right? But I never want to feel unsafe and I never want to feel stressed out in an environment that's supposed to be fun. That's basically what it is. Creating music is supposed to be fun. It's supposed to be a good time. It's not going to be a good time if I have to work with people that I don't like or people that I'm not comfortable with and I don't feel safe around. Best example I can give you of this is I used to record a group of young guys and they would come into the session all the time high they smoke weed most people do um, but they also drink a lot and one guy in particular would be in the sessions so drunk to the point where i would be trying to help correct something that was being said in the song that he was slurring because of the liquor and he would start yelling at me getting upset with me and just being kind of belligerent and it made me super uncomfortable Two days later, two, three days later would call and be like, oh, Lex, why does it sound like that? And I'll be like, well, I tried to tell you, but you weren't listening to me because you were so drunk. You didn't really understand what was going on. And after explaining that to him, I told him, I'm like, you know what? It, it really does not make me comfortable working with you because you're not a very you're not a happy drunk. You're very mean when you drink and I don't feel comfortable and it's not fun for me to work with you. So 
I started denying sessions with him. I stopped taking sessions. I stopped um, being available to him as an engineer. And I asked like, hey, we actually have this person who is available. I'm not available right now, but we do have this other great engineer who you might find to be a better fit for you. And for me, that's another way of setting boundaries. I don't want to work with people who cannot control themselves, who do not, who do not understand moderation and like i said even though it is a fun environment to be in to create music we are still there to get work done and to walk out with something you can be proud of if i feel like something that i'm doing or something that you're doing is getting in the way of us creating something that's that we can feel proud of when we leave at the end of the session then maybe it's not a good fit and that's okay that's a boundary that i am willing to enforce for the good of the art and for the good of my personal safety when people are drinking and they're doing drugs and a lot of times people try to come into the studio after the club depending on what kind of studio you've branded yourself to be it can be a sticky situation because People are inebriated, people are under the influence. A lot of times they won't know what they're doing or they're more likely to be belligerent. They're more likely to be a little risky or a little more frisky because they've been drinking, because they've been doing drugs. They're just coming from an environment where they might've been at the strip club touching on a woman, you know, and it's just not comfortable. I'm usually the only woman in the room, as a matter of fact. So it's just very much not a safe situation. Imagine that somebody is not a nice drunk or they don't do well on drugs and I'm the only woman in the room and something happens and they want to get into a fight or they want to threaten my safety or do some other things. It's just not a good look. So I avoid those situations altogether by not dealing with those type of people and by not accepting sessions and phone calls during certain hours of the day. Another thing that I avoid as a female engineer is dating my clients. Now, I ain't gonna hold you. I have dated some of my clients before earlier on in my career. And lucky for me, they ended up being really nice people, like mature people to where once we stopped doing that, it still was very much a good working relationship. But I would highly discourage you to do that as an engineer. Be very, very careful, all right? Be very, very careful with that. The reason why is earlier on in my career as an audio engineer, I would find that a lot of people, you think that women are doing things with men and producers to get into the studio, to get beats, to get put on, to get famous. Men actually will feign interest, trying to get free studio time, trying to get free vocals, trying to get free whatever, whatever has to do with music related subject, right? And because I'm pretty and I do music, a lot of times guys will try to use that as a way to get in with me, but what they really want is a free service. So that's one reason for the boundaries. Another reason is just, it's, it's not great for business. I have had situations before where clients have hit on me and I've rejected them and then I lose that business because they're embarrassed that I rejected their romantic advances, right? So that's another reason why, but just dating clients in general, it becomes bad practice. It can give you a bad reputation, especially if things end badly. Um, it is possible to do it successfully, but you have to really be honest with yourself. Are you the kind of person that's mature enough to date someone? And if it doesn't work out, are you mature enough to continue to work with that person? All of these things depend, but you don't want to run the risk of losing clients over something like that especially if it was a great working relationship and it's sometimes very difficult to find an artist that you like to work with but for an artist it's hard to find an engineer that you work really well with so you just don't really want to cross those lines because it could threaten the whole creative process and like i said it is the entire point of being in the studio is to create something that we are going to be proud of something that we can walk out of here and be like wow we did that Dating clients can put a damper over that. Um, it can cause jealousy amongst other clients. Uh, as I've said before, trying to date someone and then explaining like, oh yeah, I did used to date this person um, and they find out you're in a session with that person. It gets, it can get very sticky. And I've made my mistakes with that in the past, but I would definitely caution you against dating your clients. Another thing that I avoid as a female engineer is wearing the wrong clothes and by this is this falls under like professionalism i avoid wearing things that are too tight too sexy too revealing 
Because again, I am usually the only woman in the studio. This is also for safety purposes, but also just being professional. Even though we have a lot of liberties in the music world, you can pretty much show up however you want to and nobody cares as long as you're good at what you do. But when you are a female engineer working in this male dominated industry, what you wear and what you look like very much affects the experience that somebody is going to have with you recording in the studio. Now, a lot of times I show up to the session looking very bummy. Um, I would, I used to show up to the studio in gym clothes because they're very comfortable. And to me, they were bummy, but I even had to stop showing up in that because men will sexualize you know i might have leggings on and it's showing the curves of my body i might have a sports bra on and even though i have a jacket on or something like you know my my belly button might be showing my stomach might be showing i might have shoulders showing you know guys can be gross um and it does actually become distracting for some guys they can't help themselves and again I don't want to tempt anybody. I don't want anyone hitting on me. I want to stay professional. So this falls under professionalism. Wear appropriate clothing. Be conservative. Be comfortable. Um, I won't even go to the studio wearing like party clothes. Like, I would have to go to events after a session sometimes. So I would show up with my makeup done and I would have my outfit on already. I don't even do that because it's just... It's too much, okay? And like I said, a client would ask me out, I would reject their offer, and then I don't see that client anymore. I lose money. So this more so falls under professional professionalism and maintaining a professional environment. As an engineer, we are part of the environment. We help to curate the vibe at the studio. So the studio has to be professional. It has to be clean. It has to be presentable. All the gear has to work. As the engineer, we have to be clean. We have to be professional and we have to work in a professional manner. So I avoid wearing provocative, revealing clothing. And I would advise you to do the same, especially if you are a female engineer, because it will affect the experience of the recording session. Another thing I avoid as a female engineer is being timid. Now this one might come as a surprise, but being a woman especially, people already assume that we are dainty and we're delicate and we're feminine. And yes, I am definitely all of those things. However, I am not timid. I am not a pushover. And as women, we want to be very careful to not gain a reputation of being timid or being a pushover. We're already seen as inferior or weaker than the male counterparts because we're women. And like I said, we're seen as dainty and delicate and sensitive and all of these things. The reverse side of that is if we're a little too outspoken, a little too aggressive, then we get labeled as a bitch, right? So I avoid being timid, but what I do is I am assertive and I make sure to speak up for myself. I make sure to voice my opinions in a stern but obviously respectful way when it comes to maybe somebody wants my opinion on how their song is. Do I like it? What do I think about it? Um, am I vibing with it is the question that I usually get from my male clients when they're asking me stuff like that. And I don't shy away from the criticism. When I first started out, I used to be very afraid of losing clients and this this is with the boundaries too right like this is why i accepted phone calls all hours of the night and sessions all hours of the night even one hour sessions wild there needs to be at least a two three hour minimum right but this falls into like having that mindset it's also like a scarcity mindset too like the fear of not having clients is a scarcity thing where do you not have confidence in yourself to believe that you will attract more business and I used to be very much caught up in, well, if I say the wrong thing, they're not going to want to come back. If they don't come back, then maybe they're not as serious of an artist as you think. Real artists can take criticism in a respectful manner, of course, especially if it's constructive. They can take criticism and still come back and we still create. Like That's how the creative relationship between artists and engineer works, right? If someone cannot take your criticism, then... Either you become the button pushing engineer or it might not be a good fit for that person to be your client. But don't be fearful of speaking up. The reason why you get the clients you get is for your personality and for your skill set. 
They could work with somebody else, but they're not going to get the same experience they would have if they worked with you. So don't be afraid of standing in who you are, standing in, in your opinions and standing on your skill set and what you offer and the sound that you provide for your clients. Very much stand up for yourself and stand on business for those things. You will find your tribe. You will find the kind of clients that are going to be lifetime, uh, long term clients in your life. And the last thing that I avoid being a female engineer is unprofessional studios or studio managers. Why is this included on my list? Well, because just like I mentioned earlier with maintaining a professional environment when it comes to working in the studios, this falls under professionalism and this falls under boundaries. If you are working in an unprofessional studio, as a woman, do not expect them to protect you. And if you're working with unprofessional people, they will not protect you. They will not make you feel protected. They will not have certain systems in place to deal with clients should they come at you the wrong way. So I like to be in studios that are professional and have professional systems in place and professional people in place. An example of a studio that I might find more professional than others I need studios that I work out of to have security camera systems. Why? Because as a woman, especially as a studio owner in general, you should want to know who's coming in and out of your doors and you should want to have some kind of security in place. There's a lot of expensive equipment in studios. And if something, God forbid, God forbid, if anything happens, you need to be able to have some way to identify a perpetrator, right? As a woman, though, too, sometimes weird things happen in studios and in sessions. I need to be able to say, hey, this is what happened. And it, a lot of times I'm by myself. The only other saving grace would be a security camera. Well, we see that this and this this happened and this lines up with what Lexi said and blah, blah, blah. So I like studios with video cameras. If they don't have video cameras, this might be a little shady establishment. I don't think I want to be working there. OK. And then professional as in keeping the studio clean, keeping it smelling nicely. Some places allow smoking and that's cool. I'm not, I don't really care to be in smoking studios because I don't like the smell of it in my hair and in my clothes. But even if they do have smoking, it's still clean. It still smells good. And it's a vibe. It's all about maintaining a vibe and making the environment one that is the most conducive for having a good time, letting loose, being free and creating freely right again the tone that the studio sets is going to trickle down into the tone that the studio manager can set it's going to trickle down into the tone that me as the engineer that i can have for the session when all of those things are working together and we're all being professional and we're all setting a professional tone then that trickles down into the clients and the clients have an understanding of the type of environment they're entering into and it gives them a cue for how they need to treat the space that they're in and how they need to treat the people who are in the space that we are in all of those things play a big role in how is this session going to go? Are these going to be long term clients or short term clients? When the studio has respect for itself, when the managers have respect for the studio, when the engineers have respect for the studio managers and the studio, that respect, the clients who walk in, they can't help but fall in line as well. So it just nurtures an overall environment of respect and professionalism. So as a female engineer, especially, if I am not talked to a certain way, if um, I don't see certain things, if I don't see cleanliness, I'm likely to stay away from those environments and those people. And again, it turns into safety. It turns into the ability to create and it can definitely affect my work if I don't feel comfortable, if I don't feel free, if I don't feel able to help the artist create. And that's what this whole thing is all about, right? So those are some things that I avoid as a female engineer. What are some things that you avoid as an engineer? Let's help each other out in the comment section down below. Give some advice. What is something that you've learned over the years that you make sure is like a rule for you? Like that is your standard. That is what you abide by. Let me know in the comment section down below or let me know in the review of this episode if you're listening on podcasting platforms. But I want to thank you so much for tuning in to today's Lex Chat. My name is Lexi. Until next time, peace.
Once Damn. we get it going, we ain't never gotta stop Touch my body from the bottom, put your hands on my top And I'ma let it drop, it's not even seven o'clock We on demons, I'm with for nobody else We going deep in, keep you around for four seasons We ain't playing games for that reason Keep it tight with me, uh, I might throw you deep uh, in I guess uh, it all deepens Sip you like some purple, feeling chillin' Drop, 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 drop.